Greetings, and welcome to Movie Recap Vault. In this session we are presenting a 2010 crime, drama, and thriller movie, titled The Town. Four bank robbers are huddled in a stolen work van in front of a bank in Boston. As soon as the bank's doors are unlocked for a guard, the masked robbers rush inside. Everyone is ordered to the floor, and Claire, the bank manager, opens the vault. Video evidence is destroyed, as the money is gathered. Claire trips a silent alarm. The robbers are aware, and one of them attacks the bank's president before leaving. Claire notices the attacker's tattoo. They bring Claire with them as a hostage, if needed. The leader, Doug, assures Claire she won't be harmed. She's left at a beach. Back at the bank, FBI agents are investigating. Adam believes the robbers are professionals, and notes the removal of dye packs. Dino agrees and notes the bleach they poured over everything to destroy DNA evidence. Adam gets a text that the van has been located and was torched. Adam and Dino check the burned getaway van in Charlestown. None of the bystanders claim to have seen anything. Later, the robbers meet at a closed ice skating rink. Coughlin took Claire's driver's license, and thinks they have a problem because she lives near them in Charleston. Coughlin plans to kill her. Des doesn't think they should do anything to Claire, and Glonzy agrees. Doug grabs the license from Coughlin and tells the gang he'll handle the problem. At the same time, Adam is interviewing Claire in his office, as she's having her fingerprints taken. Adam wants to know if Claire can identify any of the robbers. She suggests she can't, and doesn't mention the tattoo on a robber's neck. Claire tells him that they took her license, she didn't try to escape because they were armed. They also threatened to kill her if she talked with the FBI. Adam tells Claire there were 370 bank robberies in Boston last year, and 90% of the robbers were from Charlestown. Doug and Coughlin visit Mike to start laundering money. They give Mike $100,000 from the bank heist, and get a bag of marijuana. Next, they sell the marijuana to a dealer and get a different batch of cash. Later, they visit Fergie, a local crime boss who helped arrange the robbery, and give him his share. They then gamble and visit a bar, where Doug meets Krista. She's Doug's ex-girlfriend, and Coughlin's sister. Doug isn't interested in Krista, and goes to his apartment. The next day, Doug starts following Claire. He follows her into a laundromat, and pretends to read. Claire asks Doug if he has any change for the dryer, but he doesn't. Claire starts crying after seeing blood stains on her shirt and remembering the robbery. Doug comforts her and invites her to have coffee. Meanwhile, Adam and Dino visit a known criminal and try to get information about the latest robbery. He heard that the robbers disabled the alarm for the vault by breaking into the junction box. Later, Doug takes Claire to have dinner at a restaurant owned by his hockey friend. Doug tells her he works for a gravel company. Claire reveals that she does volunteer work at a local boys and girls club that wants to use the local ice rink, but they need money to fix it first. Doug lies, and tells Claire his father now lives in the suburbs and his mother lives in Florida. Doug suggests that they take a boat ride, and Claire eagerly agrees. Claire asks Doug about the history of Charlestown bank robbers. Doug tells her that in the past, kids admired bank robbers and wanted their lifestyle. However, he just wanted to play hockey. The next morning, Coughlin finds Doug at a diner. Coughlin wants to know the status of Claire. Doug lies and suggests he doesn't know anything yet, and she doesn't need to die. Later, Adam and Dino are questioning an alarm company supervisor. He reveals the person who rigged the junction box probably worked for Vericom. The agents decide to search for a Vericom employee that lives in Charlestown that was not working the day of the robbery. Later, Doug picks Claire up for a date, and she tells him about her bank being robbed. Claire mentions that she talked to the FBI. Claire feels guilty that she hasn't visited David who was injured during the robbery. Doug suggests they visit David. Doug learns that Coughlin severely injured David, and he only has a 50% chance of having eyesight in his right eye. While at a coffee shop, Claire reveals she saw a neck tattoo on a robber, but didn't tell the FBI because she doesn't want to be killed. Doug suggests she wait before telling anyone about the tattoo. Later, Claire mentions that after her car was vandalized she walks to work. And, some people have been harassing her. Doug gets their descriptions from Claire. Doug asks Coughlin to help him hurt some people, but won't tell him the reason they need to be beaten. They get the address of the two people harassing Claire and break into the apartment. The people inside are severely beaten about the head and shoulders, one is shot in his leg, and advised to leave town. The next day, Dino shares information with Adam about Desmond Eldon, Des, who is a system tech working at Vericom. Although Des doesn't have a record, Dino thinks he's a member of the bank robber gang. Apparently, he had sick days off work on several days that coincide with several bank and armored car robberies. Adam and Dino follow Des and photograph him meeting with people at a barbecue. Later, 
they brief additional law enforcement personnel about the gang. Glonzi is considered a notorious car thief. He can steal any car. Coughlin was in prison for nine years for manslaughter. When he was 18, he shot a guy, and told the judge it was because he didn't like him. Doug is considered the gang's architect. He lives in the same house as Coughlin, and dated Krista, Coughlin's sister, in the past. Krista is suspected of being a mule for Fergie. Doug spent a year and a half in prison for robbing a bank. Before that, he was drafted to play hockey, but was kicked out for fighting with his teammates. Doug's father is in prison for killing two armored car guards. Meanwhile, Doug has lunch with Claire. Claire mentions that her brother died of lymphoma on a sunny day, and whenever it's sunny she thinks of death. Claire excuses herself, and Coughlin takes her seat. Coughlin wants to know who Doug is having lunch with, and Doug wants them to leave. Then, Claire returns. The three have a short and tense conversation, and Doug covers Coughlin's neck tattoo as he's leaving. Later, Doug confronts Coughlin about following him. Coughlin gets angry about Doug being friendly with a person that could get the gang arrested. Coughlin raises the issue about doing the next job soon, because he wants the money. Doug tells him he doesn't like the guards, and it's too risky. Coughlin doesn't want to wait. Doug agrees to do the job, but they stop after the job for a while. Meanwhile, Claire is at the boys and girls club ice skating rink with kids, and sees a picture of Doug. The next night she mentions it to Doug, and Doug tells her about his brief hockey career. They later get frisky. In the morning the gang prepares for their next job. They want to minimize their DNA that may be left at the scene, and clean everything that may be a problem. They don their masks, and rush from the van. Doug knocks the guard on the sidewalk to the ground. Coughlin subdues the guard in the back of the truck, and starts loading the cash in a bag. Doug tells people nearby to get out of the way. Glonzy yells that the police call just sounded, and they need to hurry. Suddenly, the guard from the cab grabs Doug from behind and threatens to shoot him if they don't put their weapons down. Coughlin shoots the guard and the gang departs. Police vehicles appear quickly, and the chase begins. Glonzy makes several turns and tries to get away from the police cars. The van is spun around and stops in front of two police cars. Coughlin shoots through the windshield at the police cars. They exchange fire and the van speeds away, followed by another police car. Glonzy is trying to quickly get to where they plan to switch vehicles, as additional police vehicles join the chase. Des pulls in front of the van with the stolen switch vehicle. Coughlin fires at the police, and they quickly seek cover. Glonzy transfers the money from the minivan to the jeep. Doug douses the minivan with gasoline and ignites it. The police run for cover, and the gang departs in the jeep. They accelerate heading toward Charlestown Bridge, trying to reach it before the police stop entries. They reach the bridge just before it's closed. Once in Charlestown, they stop to transfer to another stolen switch vehicle. There's a tense moment when a police officer parked across the street stares at them, then looks away. The gang spreads the hair from the barber shop in the back of the jeep, and departs. Later, Adam and Dino are at the site of the burned minivan. They realize that there's probably no evidence anywhere that will allow a conviction. Adam is angered and tells the investigators to find him at least a partial fingerprint he can use to pursue the case. The next day Adam and Dino have the four robbers brought to the police station for interrogation. Coughlin simply says lawyer, and doesn't say another word. Doug and Glonzy appear to amuse themselves as they read transcripts to record their voices saying what the robbers had said. Doug lectures Dino as being from the neighborhood, but becoming a rat. Adam threatens Doug that he'll get a conviction with no deals. All four robbers are released from the police station. The next day, Doug meets Claire and gives her a necklace. She just quit her job and hasn't decided what she wants to do. Doug reveals he wants to change his life and move, and invites Claire to join him. He may go to Tangerine, Florida, where his grandmother lived. Claire will consider it. Later, Coughlin tries to convince Doug to do a big job Fergie just told him about. Doug refuses, and visits Fergie and tells him he won't do the job, it's too risky. Fergie tells Doug that he got Doug's mother addicted to drugs and she committed suicide. He did that because Doug's father refused to do a job for him. Doug eventually agrees to do the one last job. The gang plans to rob $3 million from the cash room at Fenway Park. Doug and Coughlin make their way inside, helped by an insider employee that owes Fergie money. Dish shuts down the security systems. Doug and Cochlam neutralize the guards and police protecting the cash room. Doug shouts through the door to the two men inside. He lets them know that he knows their names and addresses and threatens to have their families killed if they don't open the door. 
The door is opened and the two employees are also neutralized. The cash is loaded, and they depart. Glonzi and Dez are in the ambulance getaway vehicle, and help Doug and Coughlin load the loot. As Doug and Coughlin are switching to paramedic uniforms, Doug becomes suspicious of the silence in the garage. Doug investigates and sees many Boston police officers and FBI agents outside. Coughlin sees officers inside the garage approaching and fires at them. Adam hears the shots and orders the officers to respond. Glonzi and Coughlin continue firing at the responding officers. Glonzi is shot in his vest and knocked to the ground. Dez is shot and killed, and Doug gets angry. Doug now starts shooting outside and inside the garage. Glonzi tells Doug and Coughlin that the police are looking for paramedics, not police. He'll drive the ambulance out of the garage, and Doug and Coughlin should switch back to their police uniforms and escape. Glonzi drives out of the garage and the ambulance is shot multiple times before crashing. Glonzi appears to be shot dead. Doug and Coughlin blend in with the many responding officers, and exit the garage. Adam discovers that the cash room was robbed by people disguised as police. Dino and Adam crew slowly in the area and see Coughlin. Doug exits a building across the street and sees Adam following Coughlin. Adam challenges Coughlin, and Coughlin spins around and shoots multiple rounds at Adam, but misses. Adam fires at Coughlin as he runs away. Coughlin reaches an intersection as multiple police cars stop. Coughlin immediately fires at the police, and they return fire. Adam fires and hits Coughlin's leg. Coughlin crawls to concealment and pauses while Adam yells for him to throw down his weapon. Coughlin has no ammunition left, but yells back he'll surrender, then immediately stands and points his weapons at the police. The police return fire and Coughlin falls dead. Doug is nearby and sees the confrontation. He gets in a police car, and slowly drives away. Doug quickly enters the flower shop and tells Fergie's bodyguard that something went wrong, and immediately shoots him. Doug finds Fergie in the back room. They exchange multiple rounds. Doug's ballistic vest protects him, but Fergie falls back, dying. Doug gives him a shot in the groin for what he'd admitted to have done to Doug's mother. Later, Doug watches Claire from an apartment across the street. He knows she's surrounded by FBI agents. He calls her and wants to visit. Claire discreetly warns Doug about the FBI, by mentioning that seeing him will feel like a sunny day. Doug suggests he'll meet her at her back door in one hour. The FBI agents hide and wait. Eventually, they decide Doug isn't coming, and they leave. When Adam gets back to his unmarked FBI car, he gets a love note off the antenna base on the back window, from Doug. Later, Claire is gardening where she and Doug had talked before the last robbery. She finds a bag of cash, with a note and a tangerine inside. Later, we see the renovated boys and girls club ice rink renovated. The plaque on the rail reads anonymous gift in memory of Doris McRae. Doug's mother. We then see Doug at a waterfront place. The end. Please like and subscribe, if you'd like to see more videos.